Hi Lee, I'm at your studio. Um, thank you so much for hosting the Abercrombie Abbe Arts Festival. You, you have two streams of work. You're um, predominantly a painter, would, would you say? That's right, yeah. I'm mainly oil painting at the moment. Yeah, uh, and you focus on still lives and portraiture. That's right. Some yeah. landscape work. Yeah. Um, it'd be lovely to see inside the studio. Can you tell us a bit about um, setting up the studio here in Kumbi? Yeah, so we were lucky enough to find this uh, building. Um, well, it was probably about seven years ago, I guess now. Uh, it was a school uh, before, a primary school, but unfortunately it closed down. There were just not enough pupils here, and I think the, the money didn't add up, so they closed it. It was derelict for two years. We were lucky enough to buy it at an auction, so we did that and then set it up as an art school and art studios. Um, and you did an awful lot of the work yourself, didn't you? So we did, yeah, we did most of the work yeah. ourselves actually. Let's uh, have, go inside yeah, and have a good look, look. Yeah. yeah. So here we are in what used to be the, um, the school hall and um, the main classrooms of the yeah. school. Yeah, uh, In this room space. we do a lot of our teaching actually. Um, we teach students uh, traditional drawing and painting techniques yeah generally uh, that happens in here so you're lucky to have two spaces that you work in here yes that's right yeah. yes so separate here. disciplines lights off. so you use the curtains here for controlling the light source for that's right yeah, yeah. so uh, i've just turned on the lights but normally yeah. um, what would happen is that most of the lights would be off, yeah. possibly this one above the window here, which is uh, a daylight bulb. So if it's a dark day, I can have that one mm. on. But the idea is that this room has north light. Uh, north light changes the least of any any lighting. Mm. Um, and you can get lovely, you can see really lovely, uh, lovely subtleties in, in the light. So you can see here I've got a set up with some blossom, which sadly is now gone. Uh, Although you quite enjoy that part of the painting process, do you? To sort of capture the gradual changes? In absolutely, the, yeah. yeah. I mean, I paint quite a lot of floral paintings and it's, uh, it's really nice to capture um, not just one instance yeah. of, of, of the life of the plant, but, you know, capture the sort of journey from from it being alive to, to when it when when the petals fall off and die, um, it yeah, it's it. interesting both in terms of you know the composition and structure, but you know there's more of a story there with the journey yeah, of the life and sort of the thing, yeah. And this is a piece you've just started? Yeah, or? so this piece is probably, I guess it's getting towards halfway there. I'm yeah. just still defining the structure of it at the moment, actually. I mean, you can see some parts of the painting are, are more worked than others. So yeah. the, the vase, I've put a little bit more into it, a couple of the apples. And I'll actually build on this. I'll add more apples into the composition and I'm just at the moment working out uh, where all the blossom is going to go. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying developing it. I mean, portraits aren't quite so forgiving in terms of moving things around in the composition. But in those portraits, I try and capture the essence of the person. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really important. And a lot of that is in the eyes. Um, try and make it feel as if that person's there and you kind of know them. I think it's so interesting how you um, bring focal points to portrait. Could yeah. you perhaps tell us a little bit more about the magic that happens there? Yeah, well maybe if we have a look at this, this example here yeah. of, of, a, of a guy called Gerald, who's actually an electrician from oh, fantastic. near Um You see what I've done with this, this painting is I've um, 
got him kind of looking slightly off off canvas here. Yeah. Um, but talking about the focal points, a lot of um, a lot of it revolves around how the contrast works in the picture, and your eye will be drawn to the areas of highest contrast. So often, placing a highlight right near the centre of the eye with the black next to the white, that will be the highest point of contrast on the painting, and that will draw the viewer into that area. Yeah. I mean, naturally, people are attracted to people's eyes when they look at portraits anyway, but I I kind of overemphasise it. And on, on this particular painting, you know, I added extra highlights on the top of the glasses as well. Yeah. And made a bit more of them than there actually yeah, was. Yeah, so again, a, to bring again the, another strong to bring contrast. Bring the eye into that. And, and so you, to, in to counterbalance that focal point, then there's a looser, looser work around the edges of the canvas. Would you say? Absolutely, yeah. And you can see there's quite a lot of loose work, and there's there's uh, a bit of compression of values as well. So. You might um, have to explain that. Okay, yeah. So what I've done viewers. on the eyes is sort of yeah. kind of push the value range as much as I possibly can to get the focus on it. And when I'm talking about compression of value, so for example, mm. we look at the at the beard area, the the values change much less, and actually I would have changed yeah. them less than the reality. I see. So they're yeah. kind of a bit more unified. So there might um, have been more grey, for example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can see that it does get darker as the form turns. And yeah. I think what's really important yeah, in any painting gives is... gives it a lovely depth. Yeah, is, is, is actually capturing the form. Um, yeah. So using the, you know, the, 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 the values to, to change the form. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of tricks going on when yeah. we're painting. It's not just about capturing that person. It's, it's trying to make a picture that's engaging, um, that people's eyes are going to remain on, and in particular with portraits, that people can kind of feel they're almost getting to know that person yeah. a bit. Yeah, it's the intimacy. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I do love portraits, and actually the por the process of portrait painting is yeah is, is is probably my most you know the thing I most yeah. enjoy. These are all painted from life, so this painting would have been painted over I think it was about five or six sittings of a morning each. Mm -hmm. So I got to know Gerald. Yeah, over that time. We I talked can only a lot. imagine the conversation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it turned out that Gerald's not just an electrician, but he's a he's a musician as well, and you know, I share an interest there. So we yeah. talked a lot about music and just life in general. We, it's actually a really enjoyable, engaging process. Yeah. And you know that warmth comes through in that portrait. There is a sense yeah, of exactly, a relationship yeah. between you and Gerald. Yeah, yeah, it's really and important, I think. I think that's really precious, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you see a lot of portraits where it's kind of a model sitting kind of still and just staring, and I like the models when I paint, talk all the time. Yeah. It keeps the light in the eyes and it yeah. keeps the engagement. Yeah, it's really good fun, yeah. really good fun. And actually the models tend to enjoy it as well because they're, it's very rare that people get uh, you know, time to sit down and yeah. just kind of just talk and enjoy yeah, themselves. Yeah, that's so, sort of one-to-one. -one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And one of the things that does attract me to the painting is, is the kind of, the lack of immediacy. The fact that, you know, there is craftsmanship involved in making something beautiful and it just, you know, it's quite different to this modern expectation that everything is just instant and just yeah. happens straight away. So, um, that you need to put the time in to make something yeah. happen. So you're actually valuing the process as much as Absolutely, the yeah. outcome. And here's yeah. an example. I don't do a lot of landscapes at the moment, but here's an example. This is just actually of, um, uh, in, from Pembrokeshire. This is a painting I did recently. I'm lucky enough to get away over Easter for a few days, for the first time in a year or so. And so this brings back lovely memories of very early morning walks along mm, the beach. Yeah, you captured that light, that warm light. Yeah, so this one will end up on, on my wall. I don't keep many of my paintings, but this one I will.
Okay, welcome to my print room. Yeah, so well, is... it's a very familiar room to me because my first printmaking lessons were here. And right, okay, yeah. You uh, were a wonderful teacher and really oh, got you. got me going. But right. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be talking about your prints. Okay, but, um, good, thank you. Should we start with this collection behind you? Yeah, so what we've got here is I did a whole series of um, lino prints, um, mainly from the Brecon Beacons. There are some other ones. This is Cthulhu Castle, yeah, lovely. which is just outside. We've got Sugarloaf. This is um, Krakow Bridge. This is actually from where I live, looking towards the Blorange. Um, Table Mountain, Sugarloaf. Oh, yeah. Carrick uh, Kennan Castle, which is just about in the Brecon Beacons, I think. Maybe slightly outside, near to, near the Swansea Way. Yeah. Um, so these, these prints are all made from um, one piece of lino, a process called reduction lino printing. Um, so the way they're made up is I'll, I'll do a design uh, and then actually to print, to print the prints, it's a process of cutting away, first of all, everything you want to be white on the picture yeah. and then printing a layer in various colours. Uh, and then once I've done that a few times, um, so printed the number in the edition, then cut away some more and then print a diff different layer on top, generally darker. Yeah. So building up the images and the images will slowly appear yeah. over time. So it's quite a time consuming process and needs a lot of planning. Yeah. I mean, and each of these is uh, probably a week's work at least. I'm sure. And you have to think in the reverse, not only oh, yeah. 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 Uh, in terms of landscape, but in terms of colour appearing on the canvas. It's Absolutely, yeah. So The yeah. negative spaces are what you create first, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So interesting, you know, so for this one, for example, the first things that would have been cut out are some of these areas of snow. Yeah. Um, and the, in the sky. Yeah. So I think snowy landscapes do really appeal to printmakers, don't they? Because they do, yeah. I think it's yeah, the white being yeah. the, the white of the, the white paper of the paper, through. yeah. I developed this series some some years ago, uh, probably oh, 2010, I think I started them. I can't really remember, to be honest. Um, I haven't done many for a while, uh, but I will do some more. Yeah, so the painting came after the printing. Yeah, I always wanted to learn, to learn how to be a painter, so yeah. that kind of became a bit of a distraction, really. But you started with printmaking, is I that right? I started with printmaking, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a great process, and it's, it's really good to get these lovely graphic images yeah. but also it's, it's really good discipline in terms of being able to break down a, a, a design into different value layers yeah. and actually spend so this one is uh, of some echinacea flowers mm. not that you can see that at the moment um, and I'm just getting the design onto the lino I don't know if you can see this but this, is, this yeah. is actually the design I did design it on yeah. tracing paper you can see there's a slightly art nouveau feel yeah, to it lovely. with the circle. Yeah. And it's the third one framed in the, by the circle. Yeah, there's a there's a third one in a series of, of prints I'm I'm developing. So I'm you do like to work in series, don't you? It just Yeah, definitely. You, partly because people then can collect them, is that why? Well um, I, that's not why I do it, no. but people do collect them. The Which is a I, nice Benefit, yeah, it's a nice benefit, but yeah. not an expected. It's not why no. I do it. I do it. It's more for me. I mean, for me, it's a lot about it's the fun of making things yeah. and developing an idea and a style. Yeah, and progressing and the idea it, further. Yeah. yeah. I I must say I do. It terrifies me the thought of being defined by one style. I think yeah. the style is just. Um, you know, it's like another colour on the palette, really. And That's so it's, interesting, because I think a lot of people hanker for a personal style. Yeah. So I'm really interested in your turning that on its head. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, a lot of artists, I guess, do develop a style and become known for it. But yeah. I, I must say, I tend to 
once I've achieved something, I then want to move on and do something different. And learn and progress. And I think it's quite yeah. exciting to try different things yeah. and different styles. Yeah. I think that uh, flowers at the moment are trying to keep on bringing me back. Mm. I think there's there's something about them. I think it's the structure. I think it's the colour. I think that they're actually quite abstract when you look at the yeah. shapes. And yeah, you've really captured that with this design. Yeah, and it's kind of, you know, you get so much interesting positive and negative shapes yeah. going on. So there's some daisies. And one thing that's interesting about this series is that I'm actually embellishing them with gold leaf as yeah, well. So this is... Capturing them. Yeah, so which will, which will change as you, as you yeah. move. Um, and again, on that one, I kept the palette very restricted. It's just in blues yeah. with the yellows. Which makes it very strong, very striking. Yeah. This one's a bit more diff bit different. There's a there's a kind of older feel to this yeah. one in some ways. Yeah, it's very lovely. Yeah, this yeah. is a reduction lino print, and this was, I think this was um, three layers. It wasn't many. No. So you can see actually on the you've, you've achieved a lot. Yeah, in three on, layers. on the on the first couple of layers, there's a lot of painting going on. So you mentioned my painting informing my printmaking. Yeah. So. Um, I would on the, on the liner. I've actually painted with rollers. So, for example, reds here, greens here, you know, orangey browns here, yeah. oranges here. So you can see as the colours, you know, this, for example, this piece here is is actually printed in one in one yeah. part, but it's inked up Loosely, with different rollers. Yeah, yeah, nicely. And then I use the later layers to kind of unify the the whole image. So yeah, I'm enjoying this series. So yeah. you'll see more of these. Oh, so. fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time and it's just Pleasure. a really wonderful space and yeah, I'm glad so. it'll be opening up again now Covid settling down. Yeah. <laughs>